and gentlemen, this calypso you're going to hear it is true. It is entitled There is No Place Like My Home, which made me king of 1964, and I hope to reign until 1974. Sure, sure, are you sure? Of course, I am sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just like I promised, live from New York, the King Short Shirt Show. The name of the man, put your hands together, welcome him on stage. Short Shirt is the name of the man. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1986 Calypso King of Antigua and Barbuda, King Shotshot! One, two, four, down, I was born at uh, Halberton Hospital and I grew up in the Point area. Yes, the ghetto is my home. The son of Louisa Aberdeen and William Emmanuel, known as Papa Willie, McLean was the last to be born of his parents' four children and grew up being called Leroy. As a teenage boxer, he was Kid Short Shirt. I grew up with my father, a fisherman. I used to feed the pigs that were Thailand go taking care of the animals and, you know, whatever there was for me to do. Uh, of course, it was rough, but I came up good. I, of course, grew up as an entertainer from my very early days, um, playing with Bailey, Highlanders, going out there dancing the jambul, you know, trying to make a dollar here and there. I, mean, I played the um, pow and, um, you know, anything in the line of entertainment. The John Bull of the early years could be quite a fearsome creature. The bigger bull could even scare the smaller bull, as Short Shirt recounts from the day he dared to outperform and threatened to out-earn the senior bull on the older man's territory. I can remember an incident <laughs> with myself and Pharaoh, which was the bigger John Bull, you know. I used to play around the point area from um, St. John Street, Back Street into Villa. Wilkerson Cross, but um, never venture in town. The furthest I've been is uh, Alexander. And uh, from time to time I would play Jambul, but this particular day, Pharaoh, which was the bigger Jambul, had an advantage. He took off and he ran me all the way to point. And of course, it was fun for the people, but not for me. I ran as far as Destin, and there was a barrel Destin, one of those barrels that the meat and stuff was coming in. I end up in the barrel. From the time I was a boy growing up, I always liked to dance and entertain people. And I realized when I could have stepped on that big stage, I would have taken that talent along with me, which is the Highlander style of the trembling and, you know, all sorts of motion. The jambul used to gyrate a whole lot. That was part of the fun. Dancing, shaking the waist and winding up and stuff. That was the jambul. And, you know, with that, I took that with me because, you know, I was a good shaker of the ways. Churchill used to dance Highlanders a long time ago with me. And Bailey was the captain at the time. And they have some dance they call number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. They call it a crazy dance from five to four. The number one dance now is is a slow dance. He went up. He, he went up. You know what I mean? And the second dance is a slow dance. And the third dance is just a little faster. The 
short, he used some of the Highlanders dancers on stage in his performance. I do believe because of um, that dancing and that confidence within me ever since I was growing up, that could have taken me a long way in that Calypso competition. I think I had an advantage. I think I was about the best performer on that stage at Carnival Time. I can recall growing up, there was a special man in Pine they called Alan Buck. He was a great dancer. And a drummer they called Evans, a man that's beat the drum. And Alan Buck used to be a great entertainer. I can recall he used to tie my hands together, both of them, make a knot at the end of the rope and put it in his mouth and spin round and round and round. And he would also run off and jump over this garden farm. Very dangerous act. But in those days, good entertainment. While I was growing up, I used to listen to Melody and Sparrow. I used to like those guys. And I was influenced by them. In school, I used to be singing and, you know, we call extempo, picking and singing and anybody. And one day, Oscar Mason knew of my talent and came and asked my father to allow me to go and sing with his band. And I get the opportunity and I started with Mason. After starting with Mason, I decided to go into Calypso competition. I didn't have an actual name, but growing up in Pint, the guys used to call me Short Shirt, simply because my sister Tiny, who passed, used to make my shirts for me. Growing up, it was tough, never have enough material or money to buy material, so she used to make it short and style it her own design. Ask her mason, say what they call it. I said, they call me Short Shirt. And then he said to me, well, use that. That's how I get the name Short Shirt. Run, Short Shirt, run. Run for your life. Run, Shorty, run. Man, when I was growing up as a boy, they had great man like Quarko. He was good, but he was not really my influence, so to say, to bring me to this point. But Quarko was a genius in his days. I can recall he was singing the latest murder. Anything happened in a matter of an hour, he on the street with a piece of paper selling it and, you know, making it very popular. Blackshirt is a cousin of mine. We grew up together. I used to sing with Blackshirt at Christmas time. He would go around from place to place and with a mask on her face and singing like Jonah and the Big. And um, he was singing Calypso then. I was just following as the backup. Fortun fortunately, after he's leaving for England, I decided to pick up the obligation. And so I started. The question is, whether King Short Shirt was born to be an entertainer. He was involved in all the entertaining activities in the point. He was a Highlander, he was a Jambore, he played in the Point Iron Band. He, like the average person, would have gone to Red Rose with the jute box, also Baker's Corner. That was the main spot for all sorts of activities. In fact, organized early tents were held on the upstairs of the Baker's house. His father was a fisherman. He himself became an apprentice along with his brother. At that time, youngsters in Point would more or less be either a fisherman, a boat builder, a carpenter, a mason, or some such thing. Short Shirt had made a clear break from that type of activity. a fisherman. In school my first thing was going to sing with my father and my brother. I can remember that they always tell me, take a look on the shore, look on the island. Make sure you know the map for when you grow up, you got to notice so you can survive. 
You got to you know monks still sleeping in them, Table Hill Garden, Sugarloaf, and the many mats used for fishing to make sure we can find our traps when we go out there. While I was on the boat, I can recall quite often my bigger brother would have got upset because I'm always singing. And he would have said to me, you got to pay attention to what's going on here. When you grow up singing, I'm going to help you. This is what you have to do. Well, he was so wrong. Treat me like you treat me, boy. In 1960, Shortshirt joined Paul Richards in the U.S. Virgin Islands to work as an entertainer. King Upson a good old friend. Uh, before he went to the Virgin Islands, I can recall, I used to be singing melody and sparrow songs from time to time. And one or two times he would have asked me to drop a note of one of those songs if I know it, you know, before him. Because I was always quick and catching these songs. Then he even went down to the Virgin Islands. I stayed back here. Then I went on to St. Thomas, I met him down there. We hook up. I can recall my very first singing on record with King Absinet. Um, he asked me to come and join him at WST Studio. And we did a couple of songs, Time Bomb, Melody Head. And I was beating the um, Heineken battle as the you know, background music and singing the chorus. So my sting with Absinet was a big one in the Virgin Islands. When he returned to Antigua after I brought him back with resurrection, that even make it worse. I came back from St. Thomas to Antigua in 1962. I returned with a girlfriend, um, then she became my wife. Yes. And um, after a short while, you know, she went back to the Virgin Islands. And then uh, I fell in love with Esther. I became familiar with the name Short Shirt before I know him. Because the band's family, out of the Point area, settled in Freetown and we became instant family and they're Adventists so I spent a lot of time with them. They spent a lot of time by my home and was part of the integrated family and at worship time you would hear the conversation that Esther was seeing short shirt and over time I spent so much time back and forth that I get to know not just short shirt but point. I came back and um, decided that TV is my home. Never intended to live abroad. And I came back with this song that I had in uh, St. Thomas. I started it in St. Thomas called No Place Like Home. And I came back here with that song and catch, with, catch up with Marcus Christopher in the earlier days. And um, we started working together. I met Short Shirt. Way back in 1962, when I was chairman of um, the Calypso Committee, Short Shirt entered the competition that year, 1962. But unfortunately, he didn't pass the elimination because he wasn't up to that standard. But I discovered the guy and saw the potential, and I invited him to come some assistance. I offered my assistance actually. However, the next year I wrote for him and he entered the competition and he was first run up singing um, Parasite. That name came about because of the influx of Trinidadians who came here during the um, hotel season and worked all the hotels. Well, Shortshit is a very aggressive person, right? And he seemed to be a guy with a purpose from early o'clock. So after he had placed in the competition and so on, he too decided he's singing in the hotels. So there he went and challenged the whole situation. In 1962, when I came back from the Virgin Islands, I decided to into that Calypso competition. Unfortunately, I failed the elimination. And um, with determination, I decided to continue. In 1963, I was first runner-up to Lord Tennyson. And then after that, I made a pledge to dominate for 10 years. Well, I don't know if it is chalk or cheese. But they flock in here like hive of bees. 
Chocher won the local Calypso crown for the first time in 1964, then won again in 1965 and 1966. But his ambition to dominate for 10 years was frustrated when he lost in 1967 and in 1968 to Lord Creole. He regained the crown in 1969 and held on to it in 1970, but did not compete in 1971. However, it was his again in 1972. During those early years, he delivered some of the greatest hits of the era and of all times. Afro Antiguan and Black Like Me. Man of the Century, it was a serious song. Um, the Beatles and the MB, Carnival on the Moon. No Place Like Home. It's you know, quite a few really times he has won with uh, my songs and so on. Actually, I wrote songs for Short Church from 1962 until 1972 or something like that. Right? And he has won the crown all along going through those years, right? Short Church's first album, Caribbean Calypso. Um, issued in 1970. Um, it has on, on, on the album a collection of, of, of music that he had done, let's say, for maybe around 64, 65. Um, that's after the second time, when, when second, third time when, when he won Crown. Um, remember, he would have won what, 64, 65, 66. So a, a lot of the music on that album co covers that period, 65 um, through, to, through, to, through to 70. Some real fascinating um, pieces uh, on that album. Um, Heart Transplant, for example, comes to mind. Virgin Island Girl, um, European Common Market, the, the Anguilla Crisis. Rebellion! Look confusion with them man will and mama look confusion with them man will and never see that since a bond. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Mother England send down she man to invade them man will land. They bring down warships like the mad for Anguilla. They really intend was to invade that small area. They had the same crisis in the east. And up to now they ain't got no peace How the hell they didn't invade the Smith? The, the musical accompaniment is actually, actually Oscar Mason and, and, and the vibratones on it recorded in, in ABS studio If M. John would have been like, 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 like the MC and like the, the, the engineer on, on the piece um, a lot of the arrangements coming out of Oscar coming out of Big Boy um, the, 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 the saxophone player. Very interesting political analyses um, are also in the album. A lot of the work is, is uh, Marcus Christopher's work. Um, the, 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 the main pieces, a couple of the pieces are those pieces that he would have won crown. Uh, 66, 65, 66 I think with Marcus, who continues to write for him um, up, up, up to this period. There's a, 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 an interesting approach to, 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 to the political analysis across, across, across it, across European common market, across the Anguilla crisis, one or two other tunes, where he, he, he takes in the international. He, 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 he starts um, by describing what's, what's going on in the world. And then he brings it closer home and, 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 and talks about what was happening in the region and then brings it further home. And by the third or fourth verse of the piece, he's now into the national. European common market, for example, the understanding of, of, of how Britain got into the European common market is clear. The understanding of what happened to Britain after it got into the common market, the understanding of Britain's relationships with us how that would change, basically, all included in the Calypso. Fairly excellent um, uh, 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 analysis. 
and, and this is, you know, the, the content of, 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 of the album. You control us during the slavery. Everything we had, you took for free. Then you stayed on one more hundred years. When you left us, we were all in tears. We had nothing left for ourselves. Only thus you leave on top of our shelf. You wrapped us blind, leave us in the mud. Now you're gone and you join the European club. We gave you gold products from Guyana. From all the islands you get your sugar Not Megan Spice you get from Grenada St. Lucia should charge you more for banana It's ungrateful and the world should brand you a brute To leave Trinidad with all them citrus fruit Now you join the market and you may prosper I say the whole West Indies could suffer I see it perhaps as the first real expression of the call for reparation out of this Caribbean to, 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 to Britain. He, he, he says, we gave you gold products from Guyana, from all the islands you got your sugar. It, it, it details for us the, 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 the extraction of wealth that Europe um, implanted and implanted and, 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 and this society. Drew it out of this society from enslavement right down to, 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 to the colonial people and then walks away. Um, critical, critical piece of thinking um, that, 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 that we get in that Calypso. Imagine for over 500 years yeah. my people been shedding blood, sweat and tears. All we earn is white history. We lost our manhood and dignity. Our women take pleasure in frying their hair. And laugh at the clothing African wear Even our men they bleach in their skin Trying to escape the African origin And if this song was sing by African We saw whitewash we would not understand And nobody at all could take this country from we and I Say we fought for them since the dark days of slavery Come let me hear you scream Say what Antigua means It's a piece of Africa in the Caribbean Oh, we go! Yeah, it's for all of us We come from Africa And it's for one nation Proud for stars Tears tomorrow's children I said the wise and free Songs like um, Black Like Me, uh, that, 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 that body of music, which is late 60s, I mean early 70s music, is part, essentially part, of a, a world phenomenon of, 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 of black people asserting themselves, clearly led in many, many ways by the black power movement out to the United States. I mean, we're talking here of the work of, of, of the Stokely Carmichael's and the Rap Browns and Charles V. Hamilton's, the a, a little later Malcolm X, of course, the leadership early on of, 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 of Martin Luther King. And at this point in time, the, 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 black, the, the black American music is really playing a very important role a very important leadership role, um, emotional leadership. It's for providing examples, it's teaching history um, to black people. And the same thing is essentially happening um, in, 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 in the Caribbean. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the, the, the impact um, of incidents and, and, and activities in the United States spin off in, in, in this Caribbean at the point in time. The Martin Luther King's assassination in 68, perhaps is the first time we see university students in the Eastern Caribbean out demonstrating in front of, 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 of the US Embassy. We have that whole Sir George Williams in Montreal, Canada, again students uh, on the move and, and, and the leftist organizations at the time all across the United Islands, the Education Forum of the People, the New Jewel in Grenada, 
um, St. Vincent and St. Lucia right in Antigua, the Antigua Caribbean Liberation Movement. Um, so these groups are very, very active. And, and the, the, the cultural aspects of, of, of that struggle are essentially very strong. It is not only Calypso that joins it, essentially. The, the, Calypso, the poets join it. The dancers join it. The playwrights, the theater also joins it at this point in time. But I think that the strongest, the strongest statements have really been made by the Calypsonians. Extremely strong statement. <laughs> They have a couple gallant tongue, they feel they social going wrong. They have a couple gallant tongue, they feel they social going wrong. I didn't believe the message was important, but as a career Calypsonian, Short Shirt also needed songs that would be hits on the road, in the hotels, on dance floors, and that would bring him more engagements overseas. She loves Rican. Rican. She loves Rican. 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 A lot of Calypso, essentially early, early work, was, was, was around the, the, these characters, around things that, that you know, this did, that did, and the village, and the village green, and the streets, or whatever it is. Um, Short Church's work, it captures two particularly well. Rekan, we will remember, um, was had extremely great balance for, 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 for an alcoholic. I mean, he would stand on the edge of gutters, he would stand on the edge of country pan and bend right over and wash his face. The short shot does not, however, interestingly, do what a lot of other Calypsonians might have done, which might be just to sing about him. Short shot puts himself in a triangular relationship with this man and, 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 and this fancy girl named Jean. It is most ingenious. Um, and, and, and through his, his description of the relationship, manages to describe Rekan. Uh, with his red hair in his hand, drunken Rekan, nasty Rekan. There's a Calypsonian, the mighty skipper of Trinidad. He came here and he had a, a, a nightclub where Short Church used to go and entertain with him as well. Hence, I understood a lot about what was going on with these Trinidadians and the hotels and so Short Shirt being of that aggressive nature, he decided that, look, he has to be singing in the hotels as well. So yeah, I used to write uh, a lot of songs for him that he could go and sing in the hotels like this Trinidadians. And Short Shirt is always a bully. He's not going <laughs> stay in second place and so on. He has to be out front at all times. Starbuck comes 71, 72. Um, already this character riding through the city and this horse, the blankets over him, gun belts and all sorts of things. It is at that period too when a lot more of the visual, a lot more of the visual is being introduced into the Calypso, into the Calypso competition. So by the time Star Black lands on stage with short shirt or in any show anywhere performing these things, I mean they, 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 it, it impact, the effect was really, really Hi, very, 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 very high. Well, I have heard and seen a lot of Western in America, but I never know we had a natural in Antigua. I have heard and seen a lot of Western in America, 
But you never know we had them right here in Antigua. King the fella does do well, he amazed me. Can't believe to myself that he ain't damn crazy. The other day I see him running down a lady. Some school children following him and they singing a melody. Hear them. What you say? Down. With a long gun belt dragging on the ground Anyway, the man coming down yeah. Trouble, trouble, trouble Trouble is me Shortshirt had taken to boxing as a teenager, going from Leroy to Kid Shortshirt, even before singing Calypso's. He famously defeated Kid Pattison in 1964. Boxing matches later became a part of the promotion for his Calypso shows. I brought Bryna yes. to Antigua. Me and Bryna became friends. We came here, we put on some shows, and we, you know, go to the couple of the islands put on some shows. Brian even took me to Trinidad and to Barbados. We were friends. We had a good time. We were looking to make money. So, you know, people like a lot of crap sometimes. So we put on a boxing show. We had a boxing match here. We had it all worked out. Who would go down and who wouldn't go down. It's entertainment. And we took it to Barbados afterwards. Unfortunately, we didn't end up too nice in Barbados. We had a little misunderstanding. By the beginning of the 1970s, however, Boxing was no match for modern promotional efforts in the world of entertainment. In 1971, I decided to give him a full year. And he started before 71, so he started in 70. And he brought in a band from Virgin Garden. The band had a month contract, but he went on in Antigua for six months. Well, you know, Star Black and everything else. It was the year of the first um, club festa that was taking place in Guyana. So we decided that we were going to take home that band. We had Grimshaw, our marketing man in front, and we did something that never happened in the Caribbean of field. We chartered a plane from Antigua to go to Monstrat. When we got to Monstrat, it was very timely. Ace for all of us who come from Africa and all that. And then it was the Caribbean Netball Championship. So the place couldn't hold people. And even though we had a second show, um, it still couldn't hold. Grimshaw went on to St. Kitts. We, the same thing happened in St. Kitts. We were at the cinema, and it was sold out, and the people had to empty it, and they had to return. Then we took a flight, and we tried to explain, and we went to St. Martin, we knocked St. Martin down, and then we went on to Tortola. While in Tortola, I got a, um, a telegram. It was Keith Russell working down there at the time. Yoki was down there too. And they brought the telegram, and it was a request from Forbes Burnham, president of Guyana, that short shirt and his entourage will be his personal guest. And so Dame Yvonne McGilly, she was excited because she's always a big fan of short shirt. So we had sort of component when you're supposed to reach down there. So we could not go to Virgin Garda and deliver the band and ask for apology and see if we get the guys back working. So we came right back to Antigua and set up. By the time we came back, all the tickets was there, 28 tickets. We had about five tickets when we needed. Um, um, Sparrow didn't feel comfortable with the excitement and what was going on. So he left early. And there's a time Kendall brought had a, a cousin or an uncle. He was a lawyer in Suriname. And they got, strange enough, I'm in Antigua, but he got in touch with me. And he said he was going to fly over and he wanted to take um, Shorty in a um, helicopter and show him the hinterlands and number of things, the way he represented Antigua. Um, that took place. Um, when we returned to Antigua, it marked one full year and about four months of non-stop moving throughout the region. It was fantastic. It was great. The showing center was the same thing. It was sold out. Um, they had the police. They had to get them out to get new people in. When Chartered had to go, Chartered had to have an entourage, outriders to even get him through the crowd. And there's no exaggeration. This took place. And so I come to appreciate the work that Charters has done. Getting to go to Trinidad was a great 
situation for him. But he took money. And there was one time that I went to Destin and find out because if he could loan him some money and keep the car until he come back. Destin agreed and he got some money. Just imagine that you're going to this, pers this place, it's a professional people over there working and their tire. I don't know how much it ever cost, but I know Charter would have 10 to 15 pieces to go up there because he had to match the bill. Worse when he done with Raycon, he just have to step it up all the time. There's one other situation that he went back and Mr. Cosmo was there and Destin was quite casual about it and he suggested that we should get something to, on paper and so he had to go and get his change of ownership in case of anything and put a value. But Charger would never fail and just to experience that, let me understand fully what was going on and people didn't understand. At one point, Charger had to ask if they couldn't give the Carnival Committee, could make an allowance to people who want tent and to assist them and number of things like that. That was not easily forthcoming. And so he had to ask for prize money. And when he can't front for prize money, other people think that he's too greedy and he's not a needy. This time he's a needy and not greedy. And he was uh, the trailblazer. He had to get it done. <laughs> In 1973, singing Lamentation, Shortshirt lost both the local and the Caribbean Calypso crowns to first-time winner, the Mighty Swallow. He was still very popular, but Swallow's March for Freedom was the song of the day. When I lost the crown in 68, 67, and 73, it was no problem for me. Actually, I think you would not win them all. I really believe that um, it was a, a gift to those guys. I never really thought I lost the crown. However, the judge's decision is final. But I proceed. I decided to dominate and maintain excellence. And I did so. Shelley Tobit, famous writer, he wrote songs for Shortshirt and I'd say the marriage between those two people was a great marriage, right? And they really carried Calypso on, a, on another level, if I should say, because Shelley did a lot of tunes, he, he, and his topics were, were very uh, topical of the day, right? So there was no way of you um, <laughs> beating torture during those years. Frustration strips this nation. Poverty holds the mass population. Inflation strips this nation. Unemployment devour the population. Those who have a little hole in tightly collapsed. Jam was my delight. Everybody was really jam. I met Short Shirt in nineteen seventy one. I was introduced to Shortshirt by Fitzroy Brand. We met at uh, Keith Russell's home. I began working with Shortshirt in 1972. 
that when he came out with the LP, the Caribbean charm. Shelly Tobit was at the record shop at the time and he wanted Shelly to concentrate on writing the Calypsos so he asked me to hang in there. Calypso don't make money, this, this is, I think this is how he puts it, he sort of sums it up. So shut up! It's very clear that for him to make music at the level that he wanted to make music and also to support the family that had started growing since his return here from, from the Virgin Islands was that he needed other sources of income. The, the idea with the glass bottom boat was that, you know, they'd have gone out to Bird Island picnicking, whatever it is, um, and then the boat would come in and dock down at Halcyon. And just around where the boat docked, um, government land, uh, which, which, which he actually seized, and, 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 and built his, his, his beach bar. Short shirt, and I have understanding that when he finish perform, he don't socialize to the extent. He do what he have to do and move on. If it's autograph, a sign or anything, just keep going because it, he goes, we have a next show the next night or something else. And he stayed there for a long period. Now I went to a hotel room and I don't, I don't see short shirt. I was waiting until late. I don't see short shirt. So I start asking questions, nobody sees short shirt. I eventually realized that one of the lavatory door was closed and closed for a long time. So I pound on the door. And when I pound on the door, he opened. So I asked him what's going on. And he had tears. He said, he called me Fitzroy. Me now go back and tell you I work for $150 now. And change on the toilet. And all that kind of something. So we spoke right there and I said, so what do you want to do? He said that he would like to get a place in Antigua. And if he got that place, that he will start to work it. He will get some gas bottom boat and he will go out. That is the place between Halcyon and Anchorage. Um, the next morning, he went downtown and he bought four outdoor engines. But they said it needed to be repaired. When we got back to Antigua, he sent the engine with me to a tall guy in All Saints to look about them. And then we went to Tom Kendall, who was a big fan. We went to Tom Kendall, and Tom Kendall called Pookie Davis. And they put the proposal as to what would happen at the beach bar and everything. And that's when he got that. As a matter of fact, I had my workers working at Blackout. And when he got that, I gave him Cecil Watkins. Because he needed somebody he could really somebody could work with. And I gave him Caleb Mullen. Caleb Mullen is a great builder, a contractor, and he do fine work. And they started working down there with him building the place. When he got going, I had a guy named Brown, Morris Brown. He was my manager and he wanted Morris. So I gave him Morris Brown too. So I, I gave him the entire staff. And they developed the place and move on. I'm a businessman and of course um, I, 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 I venture in lots of things. I had um, stores, I had the glass bottom board, I have the beach bar and at the same time being a permanent Calypsonian. I had a record shop on Market Street, I also moved it to Temple Street. These places were costly, you had to pay rent, you know, but eventually I gave up all those stuff and moved everything into the beach bar. Here in my own native land Trying to live a peaceful man Rather than lick them down on the street Trying to make to well sleep so I can be Look they push me down Yes they throw me out Smash me up, shut me up Rock down me place out at Halsey and Co All because I sing about this land And because I sing about starvation In the island In the mid-1970s, the government of the day, irritated by Short Shirt's lyrics, decided to close down his business where he was squatting on the public beachfront. 
Church, church used to have tents at uh, Elizabeth Hall up on the hill there. And uh, down at the church we had. I'm telling you, those days, man, to pay a ban. And you're not getting the kind of crowd inside the, the, in, in these places, man. It was hard. It was no money making, man. They was making any money there. When he started the beat bar, he didn't have money. So we used to go in the country and cut bamboo. And get coconut bow, pluck them, and make a kind of a tent around the sun. And that's how he all started. As a responsible father of ten, I had to work hard. I had to have the glass bottom boat, the beach bar, the talent to go there and sing. And to keep my family going, I raised some pigs, and of course, to pay the school fee, quite often, I would have had to kill some pigs and make sure I can be, I'll be able to take care of that obligation. So I was a full-time businessman all around, working very hard to maintain my family. Ten children, it's a big number. Seven boys and three girls. One day, I was going down, where street you know? I think that's Long Street. Yeah, that's Long Street. With table buildings located, with the, with the cars right there. Yeah, the cars. Yeah. And Shorty was coming up in an old dilapidated car. And I said, Tall King, that now work. That can't work. It was Ernest Letby, who was an insurance man, and he seemed to have a lot to do with the car. Well, I had a taxi rental and service, and I bought a lot of cars from them. So I went in and I spoke to um, Letby and he, I convinced him that he could just give Shacho the car, $240, and I'll run down by time Kendall and do the same bill of sale that any lawyer do or any bank and he still keep the same key. And Shacho went in and paid the $240 and drive away with a Hillman Minx, venerable top, two door. And he never forget it. It wasn't convenient for short shirt, because short shirt kept plenty of people. And he wanted next door to open. But it was status. And it gave him the symbol. You, you can't go to all that and look like pick up Jimmy. So he's a pioneer. He set the standard until gradually things started to open up. But um, the Trinidad situation was beastly. Because competition was tough. You can remember he going up there with um, his song, The Rakan. And they couldn't play it no longer, they can't pass the line with a state created and go back and so on. And um, the next thing, Shorty was very generous. Shorty had sought it. The abstinence remained the competition. When Shelley produced um, short, um, uh, abstinence, and Shorty had paid. Because he fancied without abstinence in that competition, the thing going to die. He wanted to have swallow and abstinence and himself. Don't hate one another, love your black brother, you help me and he'll help you rise. Roy Davis, I'll tell you something about that Roy. All of us who close short shirt was all very concerned about short shirt. And he spoke to Dabroy. And Dabroy was able to get an estimate, we got an estimate to put an addition to short house and do some things. And he was able, he was working at Jews, to pay whatever little thing he could get. And when I came back, the material was there. And work started. And I remember Short Shirt just didn't know what was going on. But there were some of us around him who would always want to do the best that we can do. And that was quite a big surprise. I remember Esther was um, elated and nice and everything else. The next thing, he did a splendid job for Shortshirt. To volunteer, to be a gate man. You're first there, 
last leave and to be able to reconcile the account and to tell you how many artists might bring in XYZ and so forth that was quite um, tangible because at least you could see the decency and the honesty and you know what you got and you could work with what you got so um, nobody could ask any question because you could say because so X had three people in here, so Y had three people in here and when you go down there and you check, you could see them in, in, in the place that boy never worked for money but um, he did it every penny at the end of the night, he could tell you how much pain people how much money and that was that and that was there and at the end of the week, he could deliver I was, no matter what happened I always think you should have a float so I would say, you just make sure they give X, Y, Z. We we'll make sure this is there and the record is there. Because you have to start up from somewhere. Every time. It will not easy to forget people like those. And it's just not so... It's indelible. Because it's such service that he provides. I never see him drink a mark. I never hear him say he wants something. He don't and he, he don't be me. He does want to victory. Lead on and lead, lead on, baby. Write your name in history. Antigans all are depending on you. Lead us on and we'll all follow you. You are the highest to wish we'll aspire. In 1975, short shirt song, Lead On, a tribute to Andy Roberts and Vivi Richards as world beaters in the cricket world and saw them as our great inspiration to achieve great heights. He himself would have been inspired by these cricketers and in 1977 when he went to Trinidad it was short shirt at the top of the council. In Trinidad, the hit song Tourist Lego had created a great sensation. So much so that the rules were changed so as to stop an outside song from becoming the road match and also to keep an outside song from the national competition. The people of Trinidad and Tobago also protested the action of the official dam, the CDC in Trinidad, the Calypso Association in Trinidad. Woodford Square exploded every time even school children flock there at lunchtime to get a pee. In 1977 in Trinidad, the response from the public was tremendous. I never expect that uh, it would have reached to that extent. However, the audience was extremely satisfied with my performance and I caused quite a lot of disturbance in Trinidad, which was not intentional. However, I was a favorite. I can recall on my very first performance during the Calypso attend in Trinidad, Lord Kitchener was the featured star to uh, actually close the show. Unfortunately, while I was there for about two to three weeks, 
became so disgusting that the audience began to take off when, you know, I finished singing some of the song and then Kitchener would be left behind. So eventually they had to reverse the whole idea of me closing the tent in Trinidad, which was a um, pleasure for me. In spite of an outpouring of support for the song Toast Lego, it was banned. But it still remained a favorite throughout Trinidad and throughout that season of the carnival. Even now, it is still a favorite in Trinidad and Tobago. It was played in recent time in the old song steel band competition and had produced a winner. Such as dependence and, and things like the, the, the record store, etc. Sort of lessened after he made big impact with Tourist Lego 77, 78. For the first time, he actually says that he was well paid uh, for performing in, in, in Trinidad. And, and so this question of, of income, etc., you know, begins to change after his 77 breakthrough in Trinidad, which then throws him out in the region, which then throws him out um, to, 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 to the rest of the world. First time I heard about Gutter Vibes was in New York. I was playing there with a few bands in New York at the time, and Shortridge used to travel to New York regularly to record. And while in New York, I, I had to take him around to the different studios and so forth. And um, he asked me about coming back to Antigua to find the Gutter Vibes. I tell him, sure, definitely, because I met Short Shirt. I would say in probably in the year between 1967-1968. At that time, working with Shorts, it was different because we used to play at um, the hotels. You know, like what Calypso Joe is doing right now, play from uh, play from, um, table. from table to table. Yes. But, you know, Shorts it was not a good guitarist at the time. So I had to accompany him. I used to go, all, all, everywhere he goes, I had to be there, strumming away. That's how we really started. I was never planning on staying in New York anyway. So I thought that was a good opportunity to leave New York at the time, to come back to Antigua, to start to get the vibes. And that's what I really did. After recapturing the local and Caribbean crowns in 1974, 
and remaining undefeated until 1976. Schotcher formed his own band, the Ghetto Vibes, in 1977 and called for justice for Calypsonians and steel band musicians. Canada and Europe is where she goes annually. Cocktail parties and all. They will walk and preach and beg and pray to give her these expensive prayers for the Calypso that get to battle around. The even worse, cause the fan men get nothing at all. And the world like hell to keep carnival from falling. It's 21 years we travel, it's 21 years we play. When police will howl and chase us all over this land. It's 21 years of hardship, working until Jubay morning. And so Still. Remember we are the ones who make the jam Who make you jump up and dance We are in the middle of the carnival We are the ones who pop the back and all. We are the ones who make the jam Who make you jump up and dance Working to make this fun and The greatest son of the city And yet the treated talent soldiers And found them like this we The crown slipped again in 1977 and eluded him in 1978, but the monarch came back in 1979 with some of the most memorable songs of his career. March 13 of 79, a most historic freedom time. The people of Grenada rose with dignity, rose up from oppression, rose up from iniquity and shame. From the darkness of the situation, shaking up paralysis of corruption, tyranny, violence, and subjugation. To shine down before the Caribbean and spread terror in to repress every regime and scrupulous politicians. And now trembling in their hands, stand up, Grenada. Stand up again, Grenada. Don't let nobody come in. There is no other country in the English speaking Caribbean where on any night. In any part of their country, you could find a permanent secretary trade and a budget officer in the Ministry of Finance, together with ministers of government who come forward and report to the people and present themselves for scrutiny. No other.
Once I was in New York and Shorty had lost the competition, it was 1978, doing Unity. And then in 1979, we, had, uh, we were doing a new album, I was in New York, working on the music. And I got a phone call uh, at the house and somebody said, Swallow. I said, who? Swallow. So I said, okay. So Shorty wasn't there, so they told me to answer the phone. So when I answered the phone, I heard on, on, the, on the other side, uh, I'll go bang on you again. I said, what? Who's this? He said, look, I'll go bang on you again. I said, okay. The um, child of the universe is going to take care of you. Who tell you to do that? I'm more inspiration than that, you know, man. You go bang me again. <laughs> boy, boy, you just tear up all the music and start to, start to rearrange it. And that's how Not By Might came up. As you can hear, all the powerful music, that's because I swallow. Disturb me. Belly sings tonight. Depend on. But more powerful than the music was the message. So Short Shirt was in demand. He was invited to perform in the official independence activities of Belize in September 1981. I was invited to Belize during the independence by the former Prime Minister Said Musa. And of course, um, George Price, I think, was uh, also part of the government. And um, they took me there. We had a wonderful time. We performed quite a lot of city in Belize, and um, you know, the people were happy. I hope to return to Belize um, someday also. I made a joke on one of my shows. It was carried live on Belize Radio. That the minister, Said Musa, go give me an extra week in the land if I'm a reader religion. Total. After I was invited to Belize and I returned to Antigua, I wrote the song for Belize, a very special independent song, which called A New Beginning. And not only that, I also did one called You Can't Go Back. Because when I was in Belize and ready to leave to go back to Antigua, the girls were at the airport stand. <laughs> you can't go back. After hundreds of years of slavery and colonialist domination, we are now politically free. At home, however, the monarch's lyrics had made yet another government uneasy. So even though Antigua's independence came only five weeks after that of Belize, there was no role for him in the official celebrations. The people of the Caribbean, however, could not get enough of him. We used to do a lot of traveling around the Caribbean, from island to island. Usually, you go island hopping, from one island to tonight and tomorrow, you to another island. So we used to have a like a, a, a week tour, going to about five different islands, doing, doing, the, doing shows every night to get the vibes and short shirt. And we used to carry some Caribbeanians too, like La Tumba, Reading, as supporting artists. Fate has decreed the ghetto life for me, a life of perpetual slavery and poverty. Short Shirt was already king among kings, but he kept the common touch. Here he sits with the Point and Villa Iron Band on the popular Baker's Corner, while the rest of the Calypso world would go to all lengths to see him. But with God's grace and my brother's love, we will make it up the road. The people will not crawl. Be down that road when the revolution comes. One night we were doing a show in, um, in St. Croix, and um, the promoter told us to get ready to perform. No, he come to the, to the venue for one o'clock. So we went, to, we went to take a rest, make sure to take a rest. And then about 10 o'clock, I told him, shut, shut, get up, get up, we, we gotta get to this venue for one o'clock. He said, mm -hmm. I said, okay. About 10, 10, I said, shut, get up, we gotta get, get to this venue for one o'clock. He said, mm -hmm. And about 11 o'clock, I said, shut, get up, he said, mm -hmm. And 12 o'clock, I touched my girl, I said, shut, wake up, he said, mm -hmm. And one o'clock came and I said, Shot, you gotta get up and go to this place for one o'clock. He said, Boy, I'm tired, we want to sleep. And then four o'clock, he's still in the get up. And then about four thirty, Shot, he got up to the bed. About four thirty, we got dressed, we got out of the hotel. When we got to the street, it was about ten minutes to five. 
and we saw a guy, the guy said, Shout, where are you going? He said, We're going to this place. He said, No. He said, Yes, take us there. And this guy rushed us down to this venue. Man, when we got there, there was about 10,000 people there waiting, saying they're not moving. And the promoter, when he saw me, he came straight to me with a 38 in his hand, <laughs> saying, Come, come now, let's go. Come, 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 because people tried to kill him. Short Shirt never took to soca music, but in the late 1970s and early 80s, when US disco music was sweeping across the dance floors in the region, like other Calypso artists, he tapped into the disco market for survival. In the early 1980s, Short Shirt hooked up with a new writer, Stanley Humphreys, and that combination brought him his third hat trick as he held the crown from 1986 to 1988. Look. What you hear on the radio and TV So many wars and violence And crime and disaster Taking place all the time Until we eradicate corruption Until we eliminate victimization Until there is justice for everyone Unequal opportunity Till we learn to unite Work hard and live peacefully We'll never ever reach nowhere 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 What could be sadder than watching a brother drugged and stoned out in mind? Booze, crack and cocaine, frying this young brain, it makes shivers, run down my spine, it's Harry Carey. Harry Carey, you're killing yourself, Harry Carey. Like ripping your belly wide 
drugged out and crazy Life isn't easy, but you don't have to resign Don't hit the pill man, leave crack alone son Or oh, it's the end of the line, it's Harry Carey Short shirt going to do for you Hiya. A man who is a liar, a man who go and steal Just because he's hungry and to give his children meal We can understand his kind, we can also forgive his crime A man who knows about it and keep it a secret He shows no dishonor to save God his starving brother And even though he's damn wrong, we can all understand And so we turn a blind eye A man who is a liar, a man who go and steal Just because he's in the position to do what the hell he please We can turn our heads away We must stand up and make him pay And all those who surround him, trying to protect him They are just as guilty and must suffer the penalty We can let them walk away And the truth will oh, let God forbid But the heads go roll I said if I So they love to cry while they dig out your yard. I'm talking about AIDS, the HIV. God help you if you have that virus. They call it the missionary comes to embarrass us. All you men who like to run around. All you women who like to run around. You got to change your sexual behavior. Don't you know, this thing deadlier than cancer Brother, you playing Russian roulette Sister, you fooling with death You better get serious for sure It's kill and it has no cure But you can't get AIDS If you stick IV needles in your vein You can't get AIDS if you boys from boys upstream, you can't get it. If you leave the women of the night alone, you can't get it. Buckle up your pants, boy, and stay at home. Now is the time to practice chastity. Now is the time for fidelity. A series of events in 1987 made it an extraordinary year for Short Shirt. He was in the middle of his third hat-trick. He had his fifth road match success. It was his 25th year of Calypso, and at the opening of Carnival City that year, he received an award from the Carnival Committee. Antigua and Antiguans salute MacLean Emmanuel, short shirt, the monarch. And it is with the greatest pleasure that we present this flag to you for your long, and hard and dedicated service in the cultural art of Calypso in Antigua. King Short Shirt, MacLean Emmanuel, 1962 to 1987. In recognition of 25 years as professional Calypsonian and entertainer. Heartiest congratulations on your silver anniversary. Your outstanding contribution to the field of Calypsonians has made an indelible mark on the social development of Antigua and Barbuda. Long live King Short Shirt. I thank all the beautiful people who have supported me over the years. 
If you never supported me, now I would like you to start. And for those of you who did, continue to do so. I thank you. Then, in December of that same year, Shortshirt got married to Esther Barnes, his fiancée of 25 years and mother of six of his children. The wedding took place in a crowded Spring Gardens Moravian Church in St. John's. As I turn to the second chapter of Esther, the 17th verse, I'm going to read it to you. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women. And she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her his queen instead of Vashti. The event drew national attention as it was televised. It was almost a state wedding with Prime Minister V.C. Byrd participating. Short Shirt stayed out of competition from 1989 to 1991. The beach bar, long rebuilt, was now upgraded to a far more sophisticated structure. But that is my misery. Calypso don't make money, but most of them don't know. The monarch concentrated on running the beach bar along with his famous glass bottom boat and the daily cruises to the Bird Island picnic. But I intend to have tell them, tell them. Come to my island, Antigua, beautiful island, Antigua, wonderful island, Antigua in the King had long made it quite clear. Nobody go run me, lad. Nobody go run me. Nobody go run me. Nobody go run me. Me mama must yam. Me papa must yam. Me woman must yam. Me pinky must yam. Nobody go run me. Nobody go run me. Nobody go run me, lad. Nobody go run me. Life ain't much for us to choose. Some we win and some we lose. And win Shortshirt did when he returned in 1992, capturing the local crown for the very last time and winning the road march title as well. He was still immensely popular and was engaged for a political campaign in the US Virgin Islands. might not have been Shortshirt's last juve, but in 1996 he made a surprise announcement that he was a born-again Christian. The Calypso world wondered what had happened, and more importantly, what would happen next. I, tell you what I am a strong believer ever since I was growing up, and of course I get converted, it um, happens, no one ever knows what will happen next. I was touched and moved 
by that spirit and of course I went to the altar and I asked for my forgiveness and I became a born again Christian, I get baptized. I never knew that this would have happened to me till one day I met my pastor met me and he said to me he would like to have a talk with me and I invite him one day and when he got at home I was about to leave the house so I tell him you have to come again. Everybody knows Shortchurch but officially I met Shortchurch about 1996. It was after a long time when I had felt an urge to go and talk to him about accepting the Lord as his personal savior. This started since um, maybe about five years or so before that and then in 1996 I actually had the opportunity to meet with him at his house in Villa and uh, spoke with him concerning giving God a chance in his life. It was on the occasion of a revival service that we were having at the St. John's Wizard Homeless Church at the time. And I went to his house the Wednesday, had a talk with him, and uh, I was very surprised at his reception of what I was saying to him. And uh, he, at that moment, it was a Wednesday morning, he gave his heart to God. That was my first encounter personally with him. And I can recall sitting down talking with him, going through the words and the scriptures, you know. I felt I was touched and moved by that spirit. Um, instantly I shed lots of tears and I know it was not nothing that was planned. It was a real part in my life. Shed tears hardly could have stopped. And I told the pastor, look, I decided that I can walk this road. And so he touched me, he prayed with me, and I started going to church. And uh, f after started going to church, I realized that, you know, nothing is wrong with my music. I, people thought that I really gave up Calypso. I never gave up Calypso. I get baptized, I become a born again Christian. It's not what you, it's not what you want to, say in your song that can destroy is what you can say in your song that can build. After his conversion, he was baptized a few months later in 1996. This uh, was held at the Long Bay Beach and it was a Saturday I can remember. It was a moment of great celebration, not just for me and those in the church, but for a lot of persons who came to witness Short Shirt, the monarch king, you know, being baptized and uh, making a new step in life. After Shortchard was converted, he, of course, being involved in singing 
for most of his life, he felt that he needed to do a gospel album. He came up with the first idea of a song and he told me about it and I wrote the lyrics to the song. Of course, he and I would exchange ideas about the song. And uh, we wrote a few new songs together and he put some older songs and had an album, his first gospel album. After he put out the first album, there were many people, not just in Antigua, but across the Caribbean who were calling for him to host concerts in their particular jurisdiction. And uh, I had to be with him because he didn't want to travel by himself. With Short Shirt's announcement of being a born again Christian, old stories and began to surface a short shirt being a badger. Not liking to pay and becoming physical with those who hold him. What I know, growing up in point, at the time short shirt did, one had to be tough to survive. For instance, most of the young males used to shower at the public bathroom and there you will have to show your medal if you want to get into the bathroom because the older boys are tougher boys will disallow you so you have to be tough to survive under those circumstances Sean is a fella who says password so many things I hear about me I wonder who does make them up. But his history is littered with conflict. Short shirt like to pay people. Once he have money to pay, he loves to pay. If you don't have money, you can't pay. And most of the time, maybe when people say that he don't pay because he don't make it, that used to happen a lot in the Calypso tent. You just have Calypso tent here after the and I'm telling you, the money that they pick up, they do okay, I'm paid man. And the Calypsonians, them, sometimes don't get any money and they, they just go off with a start to talk about charge, bad and charge, you don't like to pay people. But that's not true, man. Once charge have money, he pay. To me, short, he as a person was always one that think about people, always trying to help, especially the other Calypsonians trying to make, make a way for them, okay? I always seem to try to do that. His safe soulness that he found mid-90s, I think has, in many ways, impacted on how he sees his own history. And, and that his salvation for him 
the cleansing I guess one gets when one gets dipped in the in the sea and baptized or whatever it is. That cleansing in church, I don't think it's I don't think it's fake. I think it's quite real. I had a struggle with Jesus. I wanted to have my way. Not taking heed to what he had to say. things about short church that when I got to know him I could not relate the short shirt I heard about to the short shirt that I know they were uh, oceans apart as far as I'm concerned because he and I don't think he was putting on an act because there's so many years now that I've known him in that capacity that it would be difficult for a person to keep that act up there were lots of rumors in Trinidad in 77. Remember, he, he wasn't invited back in 78. There were a lot, a lot of rumors, and, and these are things that I have put to Shakshar. There are a lot of rumors that um, he wasn't invited back in 78 because he had owed so many of the DJs and so Paola for pushing that tourist leg or um, hands off a harmonize, those four or five tunes that he did in Trinidad in 77 after the Ghetto Vibes album. Um, that he was involved in that type of, 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 of PLR with this Japanese, etc., which he completely denies. Having met Short Shirt and became closely associated with him over the years, I have come to realize that he is a beautiful soul. Not perfect by any measure, but Churchill is a person who is very sensitive to the needs of other people. He's very caring. He's giving. As a matter of fact, he would hurt or feel, express a sense of regret and hurt if there was somebody who needed something that he could not afford to give at a time. I have seen him cry when there were matters of injustice and everybody knows that he has this passionate way of expressing himself because whenever he is touched deeply by an issue, that's how he expresses himself. Now today I'm living for Jesus Christ my King. He gave me happiness, joy, deep down in it. Life will never serve him. The Lord is free my life from sin So I'm expecting to live up there With him, you hear me? family um, to defend his interests. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is that strong in him that when they attempted to ban him in Trinidad, when they banned Torres Lego, that he never got 
He never got angry with the sparrows and the kitchener. He says that, listen, man, the men were defending the territory. And, and in his heart, I know that he understands defense of territory, even if it's against him. Oh, my friends, I'm pleading for you to follow me. Put your trust in Jesus and prepare for eternity. He's knocking at your heart door. Why don't you let him? Nowadays, signing contracts and talking about going on first class seat and one dressing room and first class hotel when they go to perform, and so that's not what he comes out of. That's uh, nothing like that. He, 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 he comes out of that is new and new in his career as trailblazer, as part of that movement, blazing the way for Calypso across this region. That's that. That, that, that wasn't easy. That wasn't easy. Stories, I mean, his stories about his physical defense of territory go back to, 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 to him in the Virgin Islands. He leaves here, what? He leaves here in 1960 to go on his own in this, in this hell house. Carl St. Thomas at that point in time, house of debauchery. And he lands there, he's only 18 years of age, eh? He's not no big man. He's 18 when he, when, when, when he gets there and, and, and gets thrown into this world of Calypsonians jumping through hotel windows so as not to pay bills, of performers with no contracts, um, with, 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 with producers and, 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 and so who who as soon as they get an opportunity not to pay you, they will not pay you. You, you had to be physical to exist in the world. Um, I don't think Short Shirt will deny that and I don't think that he will ever deny it. I mean the importance of his physicality. I mean, even defends the people like Abstinette. He tells wonderful stories of having to defend Abstinette from 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 Kittisha and Calipsonians and this sort of thing. Physical, hi. I mean, the, the battles with him and, and you, Bryna, when he ends up breaking Bryna's hand. And they, those days they used to box in matches to promote Calypso. He and Bryna would strap on gloves and go out there and pelt leather to one another before they sing Calypso together as part of the attraction. In 2001, Short Shirt released an album, The Message, explaining in the title song that he had returned to the Calypso stage because nothing was wrong with the music. I think my songs are lyrically strong and powerful that educate people and try to put you in the right direction. So, in this case, I don't think nothing is wrong with Calypso. I went right back to the Calypso stage 
I did two wonderful Godspell albums. I was inspired. During the night hours, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I would have woke, woke up with a spirit. And these wonderful melodies would be coming to me. The first one came is I Surrender. And then I have the passage. You know, so many songs came. So I knew that they were delivered direct to me from the Savior. So I'm still a born again Christian. Nothing changed me. Um, I pray morning, noon, and night. I do my best and, and hope for the best. I am aware that he had made a declaration that he doesn't want to sing Calypso and ever again because he had found a new faith. I am also aware of the fact that he had gone as far as asking radio stations not to play certain songs that he had um, done in the past. And uh, subsequently he has, as we all know, gone back to singing Calypso. Now, he did approach me on the matter before he actually went back. I express my concerns about that decision to go back singing Calypso. Not, not that I am against Calypso. As a matter of fact, I am a lover of the art form. There is nothing wrong with Calypso. As a matter of fact, um, one of the first songs that he did after he went back into singing Calypso was a song called The Message. That nothing is wrong with the music, the rhythm or the melody, but it is the, the lyrics that matters. He has done some beautiful songs over the years, not only him, but other Calypsoans as well. And uh, while I did not necessarily agree with his decision to go back into singing Calypso as he once used to, I was still not critical of his decision because, as I indicated before, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the art form in itself. It is what you convey in the songs that matter. We all know some of the songs that he has done over the years. When, for example, Lamentation. These are songs that have, in my view, and perhaps the view of others, timeless messages that will reverberate throughout time. And I believe that they can create a new social consciousness because the lyrics are so powerful and they can be applied to societies anywhere in the world. So nothing is wrong again with the, the art form, but I still had some reservations about it when he came to me with the idea of returning to, to, to that uh, particular lifestyle. I just think that um, Calypso would always be in my agenda. And at the end of the day, I would not give up because God gives talent and he inspires. I think there was a hunger in him to contribute to the art form. He saw, it was his opinion that the younger Calypsonians were not doing justice to the art form. And he felt that he had to protect it from falling by the wayside. He felt that as one of the greater voices of the art form, one of the greater exhibitors of the art form, that he had a duty to keep the art form at a certain level. And he was sort of a driven by the mission, that, that mission of preserving the art form and seeking to instill into the younger Calypsonians what their obligations are to society, not just to sing songs, but to contribute to the development of society, to assist in changing the, 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 the psyche of society in relation to certain pertinent issues that may affect society. If it's a dream, it's by love dream. In part two of his collection of social commentary classics, which the monarch released in the year 2000, there was one song written by him and Humphreys, 
two by him and Christopher, and a seven by him and Tobit. I work with quite a few guys. I, um, I work with Marcus Christopher, I work with Shelley Tobit, I work with Franklin Geyer, I work with Stanley Humphreys, and I myself do lots of the writing too. So the composers are very important, you know. Lots of guys say, oh, you don't write this song, you don't write... It doesn't matter who writes a song. The important thing is to get it to the public. You told the youths that they were free And slavery has lost its day But they're not foolish, they can see You're lying deep within Slavery has not left our doors, not yet, I'm sure We have got to fight that battle some more Time has come for every man in the Caribbean To forge one common destiny Designed to make our people free We have got to stand up for the right To live the lives we choose To change and Island. Our hands are tied, we don't control our action Come there we forward together in a social endeavor Social control, we slave no more We slave no more, only then we slave no more We'll beg no more, we'll stoop no more Only then we'll kneel no more I started with Marcus before Shelley, then Shelley came in after. He was a, he is a great writer, well-rounded and everything, you know. Stanley Humphrey, a great writer, well-rounded. Marcus Christopher, well-rounded. These guys are classic. And, um, you know, working with me, make them even better. So, um, I give myself credit, <laughs> but I respect the guys. In recent years, however, Relations seem to have turned extremely sour between Short Shirt and Shelley Tobit. Short Shirt is very short on the question. Shelley Tobit, cousin, blood, you know. But like nothing lasts forever. Things must be good once they're lasting, anyhow. But whatever the bone of contention might be, the work produced by the Shelley Tobit Short Shirt combination will always be the most memorable work of this extraordinary career. Short Shirt might not wish to speak of the loss of friendship between himself and the Tobit, but there are two other losses of which he speaks with great feeling, especially that of his favorite sister, Tiny, in 2010. In every family, brothers and sisters, you love everybody, you have your preference and you like some the attitude and the ways that some people... Tiny was my closest sister. Tiny was my best friend, not only my sister. Tiny I would go to with any problem, anything that confront me. I can recall as a boy going to school, she was the one who would take me in the late afternoon to correct things and correct and teach me things. I love her dearly, I miss her so much. Um, since her passing, nothing is the same. of Leonard Tim Hector in 2002. Tim Hector, I can recall at his funeral, when I appeared on stage, I think the first thing I said was, if no other time, he has got what he justly deserved. When I saw the audience, the capacity, the people, the Viveridge's town, the Robert, and the ground was filled, 
an emotion came that almost bring tears to my eye. Tim was a great person. I knew him as a boy growing up. I know his love for cricket, his love for people, and the way he used to interact whenever I confront him on the black. I say that he was a great Antiguan. The King, Shasha, Prasad, Prasad. I don't have to say anything, only to sing a song. But I can't come here without saying something. I like to talk. When I walk across the red carpet, I say better late than never. And I just think it is great to know that so many good things have been said about Brother Tim. Rest in peace. May the good Lord bless your soul till we meet. I was asked to sing a song, a song I haven't done in many years. If you see me have to refer to my paper, consider I'm an old man. when short shirts stepped once more onto the turf at the Antigua Recreation Grounds, it was for a different type of celebration. Almost four decades after singing that he might receive his MBE someday, he was being awarded in knighthood. <laughs> The only British product and the common market. People all about want to know if this is the king. For them to be awarded the MB. But some say if it is enough. Yeah, the MVP is, is a lousy stuff It's the same discussion every place I go It's taking headlines in the papers and radio What do you think of the MVP? Do you think it has lost its dignity? But I myself ain't got nothing to say So maybe I'll be getting my MVP someday I like it! Hey! 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 I have received quite a number of awards and there are some of them that stand out. For instance, my most uh, recent uh, was knighted, you know. There's a lot of respect for that. It shows you that um, you are you're really recognized for your hard work and, um, you know, your, your inspiration that you the way you inspired the people in your country. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that um, I'm satisfied with that award. I've got lots of Calypso Award, and uh, this is my biggest thing that happened to me. I say, what have I done to be blessed with the kind of a talent that I am blessed, that I know I'm blessed with? People don't know what I, I got in it. But I say, give thanks, because this could have been somebody else. 
when I get a plane ticket and I don't have to pay. When a man pay me to do a show, I say give thanks. I could have been out there in the sea water, I could have been in the field, I could have been any place. But because of the love of God for me, he blessed me with a talent that take me through the world, give thanks. I received the Sunshine Award and um, many years ago I got that. Uh, take me into the Hall of Fame, the Lipsa Hall of Fame. The ISA um, Award also, um, that was given to me. And um, many others, award from the Virgin Islands and different places people give me plaques and stuff. But like I say, the most standout one is um, this knighthood that I receive, you know, it, it shows something different. In 2007, Short Shirt released an album paying tribute to Antigua's Carnival on its 50th anniversary. He took part in the local Calypso competition but was unsuccessful. However, during that same week, he entered the Caribbean King of Kings competition and the song with which he had lost two crowns in 1973 at last brought him victory instead of lament. Lament, oh my soul, oh Lord, I cry for this cruel world, mankind can find no solution. Crowned King of Kings, the mighty monarch retired from competition. I think I have reached my pinnacle in what I intended to do. Leaving school, my intention was to be a musician or an entertainer. Of course, I have reached the heights I could have achieved. And most of all, popular, famous, have done all the records I wanted to do. May not be that financially successful, but it's not all about making the money. I've got a self-satisfaction for what I have done. And I give thanks for that. The King, Chaucer. Sir, Matthew and Emmanuel. Living fortune and 
Good night! Good night! May God bless you! Until we meet again! <laughs>